Hi everyone. I've always been fascinated by this and I've always wondered how it was done. I kind of managed to do something close to it and I wanted to share that with you. Let's do this. So I downloaded this um, footage from Pixabay. I just want to delete the sound. You don't need that. I just need the footage. If I click on this footage and I press Ctrl D, you see that the length of this is 16 seconds. If I click on frames, you see it's 384. Note that. Cancel. So let's go to effects. Under effects, let's bring on, bring in fusion comp. Let's place that at the tail end here. The reason why this thing snaps is because I have this highlighted, okay? So if we click on this and press Ctrl D, we find this is 120 frames. Cool. So we've noted this is 384 and this is 120. So let's put our playhead on there and click on the Fusion page. Let's drag that in here. Let's open the media pool in Fusion and then let's drag this beach video in here. We can rename it to beach. Then let's go to the settings for it under inspector. Now for the full length is 384. And then you know this fusion comp is 120 frames. So this needs to start from 384 minus 120. That comes to 264. And that's that for this particular media in. Bring in a text 3D node. Let's make this a single viewer. Let's drag the text 3D in here. Let's just type mad. Let's change the font to Gilroy. Let's change the size to 8.83. Let's go to extrusion. Set the extrusion depth to 0 0.1. Let's go to layout and set the Y value to 0 0.325. Bring in replace material 3D. That's after pressing shift and spacebar. Then we go to effects on the templates, expand fusion, click on shaders. Now bring in the chrome shader, connect that to the replace material 3D. Let's drag that to the viewer. You see we have this. Let's zoom out a little bit. Let's see fit. I want to place the image underneath this A, like you saw in the intro. I want to put the image here, here, and here. So I'm going to bring in three image planes. One, two, and three. I'm going to bring in two blur nodes. One, two, and I'm going to bring in one transform node. That will be on top of here. I'm going to connect this beach to this blur node in the beach to this transform node now for this blur node let's pull this up a bit pull this up a bit for this blur node, i'm going to bring in a rectangle mask and for the rectangle mask i'm going to set the width to 0 0.95 and then the height to 1 then i'll set the soft edge for this to 0 0.05 so what i want is for it to look like this here then the height I can set to 1.1. So I don't want it to blow at the edge here, but just here. Just a subtle blur at the edge. So I'll connect that to this blur. But I don't want it to blur this. I want to blur the edge here. So I'm going to click on the mask and click on invert. So it's just this outer edge that it blows. So if I go here, drag this to the viewer. It's not blowing much because I've not set a high value. Let's set it to 5. It's just a slight blur at the edge. So I'm going to connect this to this image plane. Now for this other one, I'm going to click on this transform, flip it horizontally, connect this to the input of this blur, set this blur to five and connect it to both this image plane and this other image plane. Now for this image plane, we're going to set a bunch of values. So click on this image plane, Go to transform and for the x value we're going to set it to 0 
the y value we're going to set it to 0 0.455 now we're going to set the z value to 0 0.425 for the x rotation we're going to set that to 90 and we're going to go to scale and set this to 1.55 by bringing a merge node here and i connect this to the merge node and connect this replace material to the merge node and i drag that to the viewer you'll see that the tech the image is perfectly positioned in there now these values i have here i had to do a bit of moving up and down to get it to fit in here perfectly so depending on the text you're using you're going to have to do that then i'm going to for this second image plane i'll set the x value to minus 2.398 and the y value to 0 0.566 and the z value to 0 0.44 I'm going to set x rotation to 90 we're going to leave y rotation and set the z rotation to 72.4 then set the scale here to 1.5735 now for this third image plane let's go to transform set the x value to 1.026 the y value to 0 0.5776 and the z value to 0 0.44 set the x rotation to 90 y rotation leave it as it is then set the z rotation to minus 72.4 then set the scale here to 1.5735 connect this you see that then we connect this here and then you see we have the figures here and for this one for some reason it's at the wrong location i'm just going to move it move it move it move it until it's here gonna push it in just gonna grab this edge here and move it in till it sits perfectly like so so let's bring in a transform 3d node connect this to the transform 3d go in here shift space bar bring in a merge 3d then shift space bar bring in a renderer 3d for the renderer 3d go here hardware renderer set the lighting and shadows now for the lighting let's bring in shift space bar bring in a directional light then let's bring in an ambient light let's connect the ambient light here <laughs> and let's set the intensity to 0.5 and for the directional light let's go to transform and set the x value for the directional light to 30 and then the x rotation to 30 y rotation to 30 z rotation to minus 30. connect this up and let's look at what we've got so we've got something cool this is not positioned properly so i'm just going to go to this image plane I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna just pull this, pull this like so. Then I'm gonna have to pull this in like so. Then pull this like so. Let's see. Pull that out. Then pull this in. Okay. So now it fits. It's not really perfect, but it's pretty close. Then we just bring in a background node. We'll do the animation subsequently. I just set everything up. Let's set the color to gradient. Let's just do radial. I like radial. Let's set the start to 0 0.5. Set this to something slightly bright. Let's go to purple. And just put something like this. And then at the edge here, let's set it to something really dark from the purple range too. So it might come that. Let's make it really dark, but still have a lot, a little bit of color. So if we drag this to the viewer, we have this. Then we can bring a merge node. Connect this to the background of the merge node, which is the yellow input, and connect the renderer 3D to the foreground. We can just bring in another text node and connect that to this and connect this to the media out okay so now let's go to the animation 
So we go to this Transform 3D, we want to use it to drive the animation for this text. So we are going to use Renderer 3D to view what we are doing. So for this Transform, let's go to 0, frame 0, and set these values. So for the X, let's just set that to 0. minus 0. 0.318. That's just to position things well. Then for the Y value, we're going to keyframe Y, Z, and X rotation. So we're going to start from minus 90. And um, we're going to start the Y value from minus 0 0.4 to 6 and the Z to 1.435. So we see it fills the screen. Then we go to frame 90 and then set the value for the Y to 1.424 minus 1.424. Then we set the Z value to minus 17.52. And then we set the X value to zero. It should be minus 17.3 to my bad. Click on spline, select everything, show, then let's just select all the keyframes and press F on the keyboard. Play it back and see how it looks. Click on here and we play it back. See that beautiful stuff. We can just do a little thing to make it look even nicer. For the image planes, we can go to frame 10, then go to material, keyframe opacity across all the image planes. like so then we go to like frame let's go to frame where yeah it's about to completely disappear something about this point maybe frame 60 yeah something like this then drop the opacity to zero across all the image planes cool so now when you play it back it looks a bit more interesting Play that in real so this is beautiful stuff. So that's that's that about the animation. If we go to this background, you see it's sitting on this background. We just want to put text on it. So I'm just gonna click on here and just gonna type um, resolve. I want to change it to some kind of cursive text. Christina. You can just pick any cursive text. Let's increase this. The whole point of this tutorial is just to show you how I did it. You can use any font you wish. I'll just drag this down a bit like so. And let's color this maybe red. Yeah. Then I just get it to fade towards, towards this. Yeah, at this point, I'm just going to go to merge, click on this blend, drag it to zero. Then at frame 100, increase the blend to that and uh, let's see towards the end and then we probably want to move up just a bit so it's just not so i'm going to click on here go to the merge keyframe this go to the end here keyframe it then go to the first keyframe and um, let's drag that down a bit so then we go to spline editor and the displacement we just click on zoom to fit select all of this and press f on the keyboard and close the spline editor if it plays in real time now you see this okay so that's basically it if you now want to join this to the actual footage if we go back to the edit page we see we have this here right so what we're going to do is just drag this cut this up to this point let's just drag this back a bit like so like so so we, that means we're expanding it you see that figure on there it says minus two three so now we have two three added if you can go to part of the fusion comp you'll see we have this here minus 23. so we are going to go to this media in this beach we are going to minus 23 here minus 23 press enter and then we'll drag this to the beginning like so we are done with the fusion comp. Then we go back to this page. I'll just drag this header here to fade it, dissolve gradually. 
So if we want this to now play in real time, we can either enable render cache or we can just select all two of them, right click on it, new compound clip, enter, then right click on both on that and say render in place. Let's just say I pick A265, I just say render, then let's say we do full screen and then you'll see what we just worked on. Pretty cool stuff, right? So I hope you had fun on this one. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Bye.